Hi guys, welcome to module 12, which is on the Facebook pixel. The objective of this module is to help you set up your website for tracking and optimization success with Facebook ads. The agenda for the session is to first help you understand what the pixel is, what is it really used for? How does it work? How do you set it up in your ad account? How do you use it to track conversions on your website? How do you use the pixel for retargeting? And how you can also retarget without the pixel using your customer lists and Facebook activity. So if you want to do any of these three things that you see on the screen, so if you currently send people to your website, if you want to increase conversions on your website, or if you want to collect leads for your business, then you would need the Facebook pixel to be on your site. So let's first understand what the Facebook pixel is. What is it really used for? So this is what the Facebook pixel looks like. So for those of you who are not coders or developers, don't get scared looking at this. All you need to know is that the Facebook pixel is a snippet of code that you add to your website, which helps your website and Facebook to talk to each other. It basically helps Facebook track visitors who visited the different pages of your website wherever you install this code. So once you put this pixel on your website, Facebook will then be able to track whoever has visited your website and the actions they perform there as well. So what does it do? It helps you track conversions. So you would know if somebody clicked on your Facebook ad went to your website and filled a form or made a purchase. It also helps you to optimize delivery. So Facebook will optimize your ads, keeping in mind the conversions that you want to achieve, keeping in mind the objective of your campaign. And last is retarget visitors. So using the Facebook pixel, you can then retarget people who have visited your website. How does it work now that you know what it is, what it does and what it can be used for? How does this pixel actually work? So let's say that somebody clicks on your Facebook ad, lands on your website homepage, from there navigates to a page that has your product information and then either makes a purchase or fills up a form to then land on your thank you page or your success page. For those of you who are new to this concept, all websites have a page where people land after they make a purchase or fill a form. This is the page that says thank you for your purchase or thank you for getting in touch with us. One of our representatives will get in touch with you shortly. That's the thank you page. Now, you would ideally place the pixel on all your pages. So your pixel would ideally be placed. You would tell your software team, IT team, tech team, whatever you call them, to place the Facebook pixel, the code that I just showed you, on every page of your website including the thank you page, which is the most important because this page helps you track conversions. This is the most important place to have your pixel because then Facebook would know that somebody clicked on a Facebook ad, came to your website and converted, which is when they land on the thank you page. Apart from tracking conversions, this will also pass on this data back to Facebook. This will tell Facebook what kind of people 
have actually reached your page, your thank you page. So basically what kind of people are most likely to convert? And once Facebook keeps getting this data about which people are most likely to convert, it will automatically start showing your ads to more such people. And this is how it optimizes your ad delivery. It shows your ad to people who are most likely to convert because the pixel keeps passing on this information back to Facebook. So we've seen how it can help you track conversions and optimize delivery. It can also help you retarget visitors because Facebook is now capturing the data of all the people who have visited any page on your website. So you can then retarget to them later. Right, so how do you set this pixel up? How do you set up the pixel? It is actually very simple. So let's see how we can set up this pixel on our website. Before we go into setting up a pixel, one of the most important things that you should know is that you can only create one pixel per ad account. So every ad account will have only one unique pixel. You cannot have more than one pixel or you cannot create more than one pixel for one single ad account. How do you find your pixel? So you will go to your Facebook ads manager, click on the ads manager in the top left corner. And then here in the fourth column, under assets, you would find pixels. Once you click on pixels, it will then take you to a screen where it will say create a pixel. You'll see this green button, which you see at the bottom here. Once you click on create a pixel, it will then ask you to name your pixel. So you could name it whatever you'd like, maybe after your company as well. And then it will create it for you. You can either email the pixel code to your IT software or tech team, or you can click on install pixel now, which will then show you the code. You can copy this code and then send it to your IT team or tech team to have it installed on your website. Where should you have it inserted? Ideally, you would have it in all pages, but at the least, you would put it in all your conversion pages, right? All your thank you pages must have this code. That is the bare basic, the bare minimum. But ideally, as I said, it should go on every page of your site. So you would tell your tech team to put it in the header on every page of your site. And if you use a content management system like WordPress, then you can also add it yourself without really needing too much of tech help. If you're an advanced user, you can also use Tag Manager. So those of you who are advanced users and you know how to use Tag Manager, you can also use Tag Manager to insert your pixel into your website. Once you have the pixel set up on your website, you would also need to confirm that it is working because sometimes the pixel could have been inserted wrongly. It could have been that there was an error while setting it up. It could be that a part of the code did not get inserted properly. So in this case, you would have to confirm once your tech team has put it onto your website that the pixel is working correctly. How do you do this? You could use a resource called the Facebook pixel helper, right? It also has a browser extension. Let me show you how this works. So you can just Google for Facebook pixel helper Chrome extension, or if you're using Firefox, you can Google for Firefox as well. You can then click on the first link, which is Facebook pixel helper Chrome web store. Once you click on that, 
you can then click on add to chrome here once you add to chrome the pixel helper will then get added to your browser extension it will then start showing up here as you can see here i'm hovering over it now it says facebook pixel helper so now when you go to your website the pixel helper will tell you if your code pixel code has been correctly inserted or not so let's say let's go to the website you can then see on top it says facebook pixel helper you now see a number two there when you click on it it will say one pixel found and it will give you the facebook pixel id as well right so you can use this extension to confirm that the pixel is on your website and is functioning properly once you set up the pixel and confirmed using the facebook pixel helper that it is functioning correctly on your site the next time you create a campaign you will have this optimization for ad delivery option which by default will optimize your ads based on your pixel that you've chosen the pixel that you've set up right so you could even choose which pixel you want to optimize for so we'll discuss this in further detail as we move on great so now that we've set up the pixel and we've seen how it can help us optimize for ad delivery let's look at how we can use it to track conversions on our website there are two ways in which the facebook pixel can help you track conversions one is standard conversions and the other is custom conversions so let's look at each of these in detail standard conversions are based on some preset event codes let's look at how we can set this up so you would in your ads manager first click on pixels once you go to your pixels page you will have an option there which says create conversion once you click on create conversion it will give you two tracking methods you can pick one is track conversions with standard events and the other is track custom conversions so let's first look at how do we track conversions with standard events once you click on that it will give you a whole list of standard event codes you can track any of these actions on your website that you see here so you can track people who viewed certain content pages people who searched for something people who added something to a cart added to a wish list initiated a checkout process added their payment info made a purchase signed up as a lead or completed their registration so if you have any of these pages on your website you would then pick this code here and give it to your tech team to add it to the facebook pixel code on your website so on these on a let's say you have a view content page or let's say an add to cart page you would then give this code this single line of code that you see here the standard event code to your tech team and you would tell them to insert this code into the facebook pixel code that is already there on that page so these are standard events that you can track then you have custom conversions these are created based on urls for a custom conversion you don't really have to edit the code in standard events that we just saw you have to edit your pixel code through your tech team and ask them to add these specific standard codes into the pixel for a custom conversion you would go through the same process where you click on pixels click on create conversion and then you would choose the second tracking method which is track custom conversions once you click on that then you would create a custom conversion which will trigger on a page that contains a specific url so for example if you want the conversion 
to trigger on your thank you page where the URL is slash thank you. Then over here in the URL contains box, you would include the word thank or thank you as it appears in your URL. And then you would say next to create your conversion. So now what happens? The Facebook pixel code is already there on your page. Whenever somebody lands on the page that contains the specific URL, which in this case is thank you, Facebook will trigger the conversion and know that somebody has landed on this page and either completed a purchase or filled in a form or whatever the conversion was intended to be. Right. So to give you an example of each type of conversion, a standard event like we saw, it could be add to card, make purchase. A custom conversion could be something that is customized, could be like book a session or complete a training. So just to repeat the difference between the two in the setup process, in a standard conversion, you will have to add those standard event codes that we just saw into the Facebook pixel. In a custom conversion, you don't really have to touch the pixel at all. Once it is on your website, you just need to go to Facebook, create a custom conversion and give the specific URL where you want that custom conversion to trigger, right? So going to the list of standard conversions again, you can pick which one of these apply to your site. Not all will apply to all sites. For example, adding to cart is something that's specific to an e-commerce site. So if you don't have an e-commerce site, you would not really need add to cart or add to wish list or initiate checkout. These are some that are specific to e-commerce even make purchases also specific to e-commerce. So if you're an e-commerce site, then a lot of these will apply to you. Adding to wish list, adding to cart, initiating a checkout, adding payment info, making a purchase. If you're not an e-commerce site, then you'd probably just probably need a lead or a complete registration or view content or search. So if there are some custom conversions that you want to measure that are not covered here, then you could set up a custom conversion for it as well. So that's how you use the Facebook pixel to track conversions. We've looked at how you can set up standard conversions and custom conversions. Let's now look at how we can retarget using the Facebook pixel or how does the Facebook pixel help us to retarget to our website visitors. Just to give you a quick recap on retargeting for those of you who are not familiar with the term, retargeting allows a business to specifically target people who have visited their website in the past. For those of you who are not familiar with this term, I'm sure you've experienced it. You've gone to a website, let's say an e-commerce website and you were looking to buy a product. You didn't buy it at that point. And then later you see the same product ads following you all over the place, all over the web on Facebook as well. That's what you call retargeting. Retargeting can be quite effective because these people who came to your site, but did not make a purchase are interested in you, in your brand, in your product or service. So retargeting helps you bring them back. It helps you push people down the marketing funnel and drive them to convert, to make a purchase, to subscribe to your service. So you can use retargeting at every stage of the funnel with relevant messaging to help push them down. So let's say there's someone at the awareness stage people who've just come to your website for random browsing. They're just aware about your brand. They just come browse and go away. Then you would add the pixel to all your browsing pages, which as I said, it is ideal to have the pixel across your website. You would build an audience of all the people who browse through your website and went away without making a purchase. You would show them ads with relevant messaging to drive them to increase 
concentration to drive them to become more interested in your product. You might probably show them ads about product USPs. You might probably show them ads about how your product could benefit them, how your product or your service could make their life better. So basically you're increasing their consideration of buying the product. Next is let's say there is someone who is at the consideration stage, people who have actually put items into your cart, but have not purchased yet. So these are guys who are already at the consideration stage. In this case, you would retarget all the people who landed on your cart page, but did not go ahead and make a purchase. So people who landed on your cart page, but did not reach your thank you or success page. So you would retarget to them with again specific relevant messaging. For example, you could show them ads, which give them an offer, let's say a five to 10% off on the same product that they put into the cart, right? You could give them a voucher to get 10% off if they complete their purchase in the next one day. So you could give them a voucher that's valid for one day on a 10 with a 10% off. So you could give them or show them relevant ads with targeted messaging that would help them move from the consideration stage or the evaluation stage to the final conversion stage, right? So we've seen how we can use retargeting at the awareness stage to increase consideration. We've seen how we can use it at the consideration stage to drive conversions and purchases. Now for those people who have already bought, those people who have already converted, those who are already your customers, you can then grow their loyalty by retargeting to them through upsells and cross sells, right? So you would then show this audience relevant products that they would buy. For example, if somebody bought a product from your site, you could show them ads for related products that could be used along with the product they bought, right? You could show them ads for other products that they might find interesting, right? So this helps you to drive loyalty amongst your customers. Apart from retargeting people right through the funnel at the awareness stage, consideration stage, and at the conversion stage to grow loyalty, you can also use the pixel to help you find more people who are likely to purchase. This is done through lookalike audiences, which we've discussed in earlier modules as well. So you would create a lookalike audience of all the people who landed on your thank you page or your success page. So what is the pixel automatically doing here? It is automatically building an audience for you of your existing customers who make purchases from your site. You will then create a lookalike audience where Facebook will analyze all your existing customers, find out what are their common interests, behaviors, demographics, and other characteristics, and then expand your audience to find more people who exhibit these characteristics, right? So the pixel helps you in retargeting through the funnel right from awareness to driving loyalty and also in expanding your audience to reach out to more people similar to your existing customers. So how do you practically create these website custom audiences? Let's take a look at this live on the Facebook platform. So when you go to your Facebook ads manager, you would then click on the top left here. Then under assets here, you would see audiences. You would click on audiences. You would click on create audience here. Click on custom audience. You can then click on website traffic, which is basically creating a list of people who visited your website or took specific actions there. Once you click on that, you can then create a list or an audience of all your website visitors in the past 30 days. You can even, you can change this number. You can go 
from the last few days to the last 180 days. You can also target people who visited specific web pages. So if you want to target people who visited only your thank you page in the last six months or let's say one month, 30 days, you could just say URL contains thank or thank you or whatever success depending on what your thank you page URL is. Apart from this, apart from tracking people across your website or building an audience of people who visited specific pages, you could also target or build an audience of visitors to your website depending on how much time they spent there. This helps you build an audience of your most active or most engaged website visitors. So you can target people or build an audience of people who are the top 5, 10 or 25 percentile of all the visitors who have landed on your website. Once you do this, you can just name your audience. Once you name your audience, you can click on create audience and then your audience will be created. So this is how you create custom audiences of people who visited your website, specific pages on your website or people who've, who are the most engaged visitors on your website. Once you do this, you can also create a lookalike audience, which we've seen in a past module as well, where you can choose your source audience. So let's say people who visited your website in the last 30 days, you will then choose your country where you want to build this target audience or this lookalike audience. And then you will choose your audience size from one to 10% of the total population of the country. 1% is the closest match to your source audience. And as you keep increasing the percentage, the closeness of the match reduces and your audience size increases. So if you want a very close match, let's say for a lead generation campaign, then you would stick to 1%. If let's say you're running a brand awareness campaign and you want to reach out to a larger audience, the accuracy does not matter to you so much, then you could choose a larger percentage in that case. You will then click on create audience and Facebook will then build this lookalike audience for you, which is the audience that is similar to your source audience. Great, so now that we've looked at how we can create website custom audiences and lookalike audiences as well on the Facebook platform, we've seen how we can or how the pixel helps us to retarget. Let's now see how we can retarget without using the pixel. How we can use customer lists and user activity on Facebook to retarget them. So without the pixel, you can create custom audiences from each of these sources. You can create a custom audience from your existing customer database. If you have their email IDs and phone numbers, you can upload them to Facebook. Facebook will then build an audience for you. And then you can retarget to these people using Facebook ads. Next, you can also build an audience of all the people who have watched your video. So let's say you have a video that is on your Facebook page and people have watched it. You can build an audience of all those who watched it or watched parts of it and you can retarget to them later. This can also be used very effectively. Let's say that you've run a product demo video through your Facebook ad campaign. Anyone who's watched probably more than 75% or 90% of your product demo video is most likely interested in your product. So you can build an audience of all these people and later on show them more targeted and relevant ads telling them about your product and giving them more features, more USPs, more benefits. 
Lead ads, these are the lead forms on Facebook. So you can build audiences of people who opened the form or people who even filled the form. The last is canvas ads. So you can build an audience of people who interacted with your canvas as well. So let's now go to the live Facebook ads platform and see how we can create custom audiences from each of these sources. So when you go to your ads manager audience section again, you would click on create audience, custom audience. You can then click on customer file. You can add customers from your own file or copy paste data. Or if you guys are using MailChimp for email marketing, you can import your email IDs directly from there. Once you click on this, you can then upload your file in a CSV or TXT format, your file which contains email IDs, mobile numbers of your customers or prospects. Or you can also copy paste your data here. Once you do that, you will name your audience and then say next, Facebook will then match these email IDs and phone numbers with Facebook user information and create the audience for you. Once the audience is created, you can then retarget to them on Facebook. So this is how you build an audience from your existing database. Next you have engagement on Facebook. So you will click on this and from here you can create a list or an audience of people who have spent time watching your videos on Facebook or Instagram. So I'll click on this now. You can then choose your video and choose people who watched at least 3 seconds, 10 seconds of your video or people who watched 25%, 50%, 75% or 95% of your video. So you can choose any of these or you can create multiple audiences with each of these. So you can create one audience of people who watched 25%. One who watched 50%, 175%, 195%, and then you can then retarget to these people accordingly. Apart from the video custom audience, you can also create an audience of people who have opened or completed any of your lead forms. So you can click on this, you can then select the form, you can choose anyone who's opened the form, anyone who opened but didn't submit and anyone who opened and submitted both. So let's say someone opened and didn't submit your form. You could retarget to them with a different message. Someone who submitted, you could retarget to them with a different message or you could also build a lookalike of this audience to find more similar people who would submit your forms. Then you've got canvas. So you can create a list or an audience of people who have interacted with your canvas. So you will first choose your canvas and then you can reach out to people who have opened your canvas or clicked on any links in the canvas. You can build an audience of these people and then retarget to them later. You can also create a list of people who interact with your Facebook page. So you can build an audience of people who've engaged with your page posts and then retarget to them as well later. Great guys, so that brings us to the end of this module on the Facebook pixel. To summarize what we've learned, we've understood what the Facebook pixel is, how does it work, how do we set it up? How do we use it to track conversions? How do we set up standard conversions? How do we set up custom conversions? How the pixel helps us optimize ad delivery and get the best results? How we can retarget using the Facebook pixel by building website custom audiences? How we can retarget without the pixel as well by building audiences from our customer databases, from people who watched our videos on Facebook, from people who've 
opened or submitted our lead forms, people who've interacted with our canvas, as well as people who've engaged with our Facebook page, right? So that brings us to the end of the session. Hope you guys have had a great time learning. Thank you so much for your time and attention.